turn in your Bible to the book of Romans, chapter 4. Scripture with you, but uh, we uh, feel like this is what we, the Lord would have us to teach on this morning. So, in verse 1 of chapter 4 of the book of Romans, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, has found? Pertaining to the, to, the, to the flesh now. For if by Abraham, for if Abraham were justified by works, he had for us the glory, but not before God. And we uh, a lot of times you, you hear people talking about Abraham and how he was under the law and how this and how that, but we want to we want to try to clarify some things up this morning if we can, and if the Lord will help us with this, we'll we'll try to do this. But he says, uh, for what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Amen. Now there is some scripture over in uh, Genesis we're going to read just in a few minutes concerning this belief and when it happened and how it happened. But now in verse 4, Now to him that worketh is the, is the reward not reckoned or uh, thought of or uh, reckoned of grace but of debt. So what he's saying, what the writer is saying here is if, if, you work, if you work and believe that salvation is for works, then it's it's not of grace right completely not of grace there's nothing of grace if you have anything towards works towards the, the sal your salvation but to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly his faith is counted unto him for righteousness amen so this morning there's nothing that you can do to obtain salvation nothing the only thing that you can do is have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did while he was here upon this earth and his works that he did and believe that he is your savior and that he died on the cross of Calvary for you because here it says, but to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justified, that justify the ungodly. So that is what salvation is all about. Amen. And his faith is counted for righteousness. Now, we want to go this morning to the book of Genesis, and we want to read just a little bit, if we can, to you in Genesis 15. <clears throat> Genesis 15, and you look at the 15, 16. Now. I'm sorry, it's 15, 1 through 5, so it's, uh, 1 through 6 instead of 16. 15, chapter 15, 1 through 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is Eleazar of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is my heir. And therefore the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, this shall not be thine heir. Now here is where we're talking about faith because he was done 90 years old then. Right. And he had a long time to go before he seen this. But anyway, he says, and behold, uh, uh, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and he said, Look now towards heaven and tell the stars 
if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And when he said, tell the stars, he's saying, Abraham or Abram, you tell me how many stars is up in that right. sky. And uh, that's the number of the seeds that you'll have. Now, Abraham's seed is still producing. Amen. And the, and the Jewish, they're still, they're still, and we've got to understand this this morning when, when God gave, made this covenant with Abraham, it's still in effect. Amen. And the things that they're doing over there is still some of the things that God told Abraham to do. And so, now notice, and in verse uh, 6, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Amen. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, now here's, here's something that a lot of people passes up here. And he said unto him, take me a heifer of three years old and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Five different animals, mm -hmm. typifying grace. But listen, this was, not, this was an offering. It wasn't for keeping his salvation, obtaining his salvation, but he was just obeying what the Lord said. And so this is what, what he did. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against the other. But the birds divided he not. And when the fowl came down upon the carcass, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was gone down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he, and he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years now this is when they went into egypt and that's what he's telling abram here his seed will do this and also that nation whom they shall serve will i judge and afterward shall they come out with great substance and if you remember when they left out right. they all bargained they all borrowed from their neighbor because they were just so glad to see them go. They were willing to get their gold. They got gold. They got all the jewels and all this. They, didn't, they got it all. And he said, they'll come out with great substance, which they did. And thou shalt go to thy father in peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And so we, we'll see that, 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 that's, that, that part of that is. But now... Uh, in uh, uh, let me look now 17.1 I want to read some there in 17.1 yeah. <clears throat> notice and when Abram was 90 years old and 9 he was 99 years old when he left the Bible says when he left Ur of Lydia, he was 75 so now he is 99 so he's getting he's been gone for 25 years and when Abram was 90 years and nine, 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, Now notice he's still calling him Abram. I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Now this covenant that he's going to make with Abram, Abram, he's going, there's going to be several things that's going to happen to Abram. One thing is that he's going to get a name change. Now notice, uh, neither, in verse 5, neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham, or father of, of uh, multitudes, for a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations 
for an everlasting covenant. Amen. So when you read this, you've got to remember that what God is talking to Abram 4,000 years ago or more, hey, listen, it's still in effect and it's still in the future. And these things that he's talking about here, it's still a lot of these things are going to happen to the Jewish, to the Jews after that the, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, Gentiles are gone. So he says, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger. All the land of Cana for an everlasting possession and I will be their God. Amen. So again, when, when, you know, when people, when people want to downtrod the, the Jews and talk bad about them, which they have, they, it's been that way ever since uh, they were Jews. And even when the, the nation was reestablished, the, the biggest majority of the people didn't want to see that come. But praise the Lord, it happened. Amen. And so here he says uh, in verse uh, 8, And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. And this is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. So this covenant that God is going to give him, he's to keep it and his seed and practice it through until the end of the world. So here he says, Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generation. He that is born in the house or brought with money or of any stranger shall, shall which his which is not of thy seed. So now I want you to see something when this happened to Abraham. In, uh, uh, let me I wrote it down, so yeah, in, in 1723. Look here, 1723. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were brought with his money, every male among the men of Abram's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the self same day as, the, as God had said unto him. And Abraham was ninety years and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael, his son, was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the self same day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael his son and all the men of his house born in the house and brought with money of the, of the strangers were circumcised with him. Now, I read that to read this to you. Jesus, our God talk, told, told Abraham, he said, I'm going to give you a token. And this is and I'm going to give you a covenant, and it's going to be a token. Now, a token is something that that will will stay in effect, and it will it will bring in remembrance the the thing that you promised. It's it's giving them a token, and you know a lot of times they, they say I'll give you a token, and and uh, and you won't forget. It. Well, this is what God was talking to Abraham about this circumcision that was to happen to him and to all the Jews and it's still it's still in progress right now. Listen, that's a that's a token. Now I want you to see something in 915 and you'll understand a little bit more about a token. In Genesis 915. <clears throat> and God spake unto Noah saying this is it's in that uh, uh Wait, I'm sorry. Maybe I told you wrong. Uh, just bear with me just a minute. Okay, it's in 9.15. And 
and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all all flesh uh, and the bowl shall be in, bowl in the cloud the bowl or the rainbow shall be in the clouds and I will look upon it that I remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth and God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. So this morning we see what a token is, and we understand this morning there there is if you if you get to studying, there's tokens, there's tokens all through the Bible. Right. And there's tokens in your life through the Bible. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's a, that's, a, that's a token. That's a promise. And when he sees that, he, when he looks upon you, and he remembers you. And here in this, when he, when he, he said, I'm going to leave you this token. And when, when the clouds come over after a rain, he says, that bowl is going to be in the sky. And he said, I'm going to look upon it. And I'm going to remember that I promised all living animals, all living people, that I'll never flood the earth again. Right. So now we see here that in, in the 7, 17, one, four, I was reading a while ago. Let me, let me get back over there. It is a, uh, a, it is a covenant in, in 17, uh, 9. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant before thou and thy seed after thee in this generation. Now, here he made the covenant with Abraham. Here he, he, he made a covenant with himself and told Abraham and them that he, that, I mean, uh, knowing that he, they would see it. But here he says, this, this is my covenant you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man among you shall be, shall be circumcised. Mm -hmm. Now, this morning, all the Jews, the Jews practice it. When they're eight days old, the male is circumcised, and uh, and the thing of it is, this is a this is a thing that God sees uh, from every every day. He he looks at man and sees that circumcision, and he remembers he remembers, hey, you were the apple of my eye, you were the chosen one, and you disobeyed me, but. He's also made a promise to them that he would return and he would come back again to them and be their father. And so the, this, this, this circumcision is in a, in a sense like baptism in a way because when, when you and I were baptized, a Christian had come by and seen us being put down in the water, realized that we had made a covenant with the Lord or the Lord had made a covenant with us, and we were telling to the world, hey, I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And this, this thing here, this thing with this circumcision and the Jew, it's the same, it's, it's, it, in a, and it speaks in a way, and they don't realize it, but listen, it speaks in a way that this is a covenant between Abraham or them, his seed, which are the Jews now, and God. And he, re he, he realizes and he recognizes this token as, and, and he remembers what he said. And so this morning, I want you to, I want to, I want to go to you, uh, go, go to uh, another place here, if I can. And uh, I want to, I want to read one more thing. Uh, he says it's, uh, in, well, I read it, but in, in 17, in chapter 17, he says that it is an everlasting covenant. And Amen. so it wasn't till Abraham died. It wasn't until Noah died. But that covenant that we get up some mornings and, and after a rain or something, see that rainbow going from across the, the sky. Listen, you ought to open your eyes wide and see that thing. That is a covenant that God has made 
with me and with you and with the all flesh. Right. I'll never, I'll never do that. I'll never do what I did again because, listen, I want to, I, in, in, in that, when, when Noah, after the flood, Noah come off and he took those clean animals and he made a sacrifice or a, a offering to God. And God smelt that sweet smelling savor as it come up. And then he said, I'll never, I'll never do this again. And he realizes, he realizes that mankind is, is evil, but mankind in his, some moments can be a sweet smelling savor to him. And listen, he says, I'll never destroy that again. I'll never do that again. And so this morning we need to think about when we're, when we're praying or when uh, whatever God has promised to us, we need to understand that, that God is on the throne. Amen. God is not playing house with us uh, like uh, children play with dogs and stuff. He is sincere, and what he says he's going to do, and he's going he's to keep it in mind, and he's going he's gonna to do it. And so this morning, when, when we pray, we need to be thankful. We need to be thankful that we know, first of all, who to pray to and how to pray and who we're praying to because he is our Father and he is the one that will, that's going to, he's going to take care of the whole thing. Listen, he took care of it. 4,000 years ago, and listen, it's still in process right now, and it's doing the same thing. You don't, the rainbow, you don't ever cease to see it in the clouds uh, uh, during the, the summer and all, and it's, it's, it's there. Amen. And it's the same way with the circumcision also, and it's a covenant, and uh, uh, he's going to come back to the Jew. He's going to come back to the Jew because he's, he's promised Abraham. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he'll have everlasting seed, and so he's going to come back. And uh, this is this is something that uh, uh, I got an enjoyment out of reading and studying. I, I had studied it once before, but it, it, it seemed like it was closer this this time than it was before. And so I, I hope that what I've read here will give you an incentive to to study it more and to pray more to the Lord and ask His blessing and and realize that <laughs> realize this you're not just saying a mouthful of words to something but god is on the throne amen and the lord jesus christ is taking our prayer and he presents it to god and uh, we need to be sincere with god when we pray if it ain't the four words we need to mean these things and uh, this thing here with the, the circumcision, it did not save a soul. Just like the, uh, the baptism, it don't save a soul. But listen, it's, it's something that Jesus used to remind us and, to, and, and as a remembrance of what he said. And so that's our lesson this morning, and I hope that uh, something's been said that will encourage you and help you a little. Thank you. Amen. Thank you.